Islam has a dual meaning. The first is submission and the second is peace. The idea is when you submit, you attain peace. Submit to what? Submit to revelation of your maker. We believe that we were created. The first of our species was known as Adam. May peace be upon him. And the second was known as Eve or Hawa. May peace be upon her. And we believe that the Almighty created us with a purpose. What is this purpose? He says it in the Quran. I have not created mankind or jinn kind except so that they may worship me. One may misunderstand this and think that worship me refers to constant prayer or refers to constantly being in the remembrance of the Almighty as in verbal remembrance. That is not what is meant here. That is part and parcel of it. But constantly being conscious of the fact that you are returning to your maker and whatever you do should be within what makes the maker happy. Someone made me. And what do I call him? Very interesting, very important. He is my maker. I owe him my worship. And I owe him my existence. I owe him everything. So what should I call him? I need to call him something. So in the Hebrew language, he is referred to as Elohim or Eloha. In the Arabic language, Allah derived from Aliha, Ya'lahu, which means to worship. So Allah means the worshipped one. So when we say Allahu Akbar, we are saying the worshipped one is the greatest. One might ask you, who is the worshipped one? The answer is in the first verse of the Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin All praise is due to Allah. Who is He? Lord of the worlds. The term used is Rabbun. Rabb is a very short Arabic term, but it refers to something very large very big it has a deep meaning it means creator nourisher cherisher sustainer provider protector curer one who is in absolute control of every aspect of existence we call him rabbun and he is the worshipped one so the one whom i'm going to return to i call him allah the worshipped one i have no risk in worship i don't worship a stick or a stone or a tree or a grave or a saint or a prophet acts of worship are only rendered to whoever made you hence i will put my head on the ground five times a day several times during those five times for who for the one who made the same head and the face the one who gave me a unique identity the one who has given me my thumbprint and my iris allahu akbar so i put my head on the ground for him alone that which is the highest part of my body, I will drop it right to the ground for the one who made it, saying, Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, glory be to you, my maker, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer, the one whom I'm going to return to, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of my existence, for indeed you are the highest. That's what I say. That's the, the meaning of the term. Subhana Rabbi Al A'la. When I put my head on the ground, it's the plug in direct, me and my maker. That's it. And this is the beauty of Islam. This is what we need to know. Who is Allah? Some people say, well, you know, he must be one of the idols that was left on the Kaaba. No way, not at all. Some might say, why do you face the black box? We don't worship it at all, my brothers and sisters. Not at all. We respect it solely because it is there for direction nothing else so that a dispute may not arise amongst the members of the nation where do we face a rich man might say my home i have gold plates there by the way we're not allowed to use gold and silver utensils i have gold plates in my home i think i'd better build the mosque facing my home and the other say no 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 we have a country further down indonesia has the most number of muslimin mashallah so let's face indonesia no in order to solve the matter resolve it allah decides you will face Mecca. There we are. Prior to that, you would face Jerusalem. So it is not because we worship Jerusalem or Mecca or worshipped it. No, 
It is solely to create uniformity and so that there will be no dispute amongst the Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And this is why if you're not sure where Mecca is and you happen to be somewhere, your duty is to try. And if you have prayed facing in the opposite direction by mistake, your prayer is still valid for as long as it was an error. And that goes to show we don't worship the box. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. One might ask, why do you circumambulate that box in an anti-clockwise motion? We will say we join the rest of the creatures of the Almighty, the planets and everything else which move in that rotation. And we become one of those who do what the Almighty instructs us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. We need to be in sync with the rest of the creatures of the Almighty. Islam is fundamentally brothers and friends that Allah God is calling you to Darus Salaam, the house of peace. He wants peace for you. He wants mercy for you. And the way to do that is by understanding your purpose in life. Your purpose in life is to worship the Creator, not worship your desires and self, not worship social pressure, the celebrity culture, but worship the thing that's much higher and transcendent, above and beyond. And, to, and by worshiping God and seeking His pleasure, you get pleased. So you have double pleasure and then you end on the day of judgment with good deeds on your scale and you enter paradise because God is inviting you to the house of peace. In the Quran, the book of the Muslims, Allah, God says, God invites you to the house of peace, to bliss, to tranquility. This life is just a test and you pass this test by being the best person you can possibly be. So believe in his oneness. He's not two, he's not three, he's not four, he's not five. He's uniquely one. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say God is uniquely one. And then you just worship Him. Simple as that. And how do you know how to worship Him? You follow what the Quran says, that's the word of God. And you follow what Muhammad says, upon him be peace. Because we believe this to be revelation too, because he was the carrier of the word of God. So worship God, it's that simple. It liberates you from the restrictions of this life and allows you to see the expanse of the hereafter. And it's as simple as that. And you don't have to be an Asian or a Desi or any other thing. You don't have to change your DNA to be a Muslim. The, one of the first Muslims was black. One of the first Muslims was a woman. There are Muslims from all across the country. That's why Malcolm X, when he traveled, he went to Hajj, the pilgrimage. He saw all peoples together in the same white clothes, equal in front of God. That's what Islam is. To liberate you from your ego and your desires. To liberate you from social pressure. And we've got so many pressures by enslaving yourself, worshipping God, loving God, and it frees you from that, and you enter paradise. God bless you.